Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you to all of our witnesses. It won't surprise you, um, Assistant Secretary Rosen, that I want to talk to you about the same topic that you visited with Senator Tester about. It, I, I will say, though, his emphasis on making sure you can enforce is it, we're not, was not unimportant. I, I think I want to give you the tools to do that first, but, but do hope, considering what you said to him about food security being a critical supply chain, um, that we would prioritize prioritize that for sure, but we can get into that at another time. Specifically, though, in relation to the legislation that you were talking about, the PASS Act, that he and he and I and, and uh, Senator Rounds and others uh, are on, and some other legislation related specifically to the food supply chain, um, do you do you believe that the role of the Secretary of Agriculture as a standing member would be helpful? Because one of the frustrations I saw from our vantage point during the that last awful uh, year of nightmare in Grand Forks, North Dakota, where Fu Fang had purchased the 370 acres near Grand Forks, some 12 miles from the from the uh, Grand Forks Air Force Base, and you also mentioned sensitive facilities in your in your statement, uh, your opening statement, as, as one of the criteria. We were very frustrated that after CFIUS took the the first 60 plus another 15 or so days to conclude that they didn't have jurisdiction, <laughs> it was very frustrating to watch that play out. Would it have helped? And 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 well, would it have helped to expand CFIUS with the Secretary of Agriculture as a standing member so that food supply chain is in fact a, a higher priority? Well, thank you, Senator, for the question. For our continued dialogue yeah. on what is a very important issue. Um, and I'll repeat what I said to Senator Tester, food security, particularly in the supply chain, is a critical national security issue. As you know, I can't talk about any particular case or comment on any particular mm -hmm. case. That said, I want to address um, your, your comment a bit more generally about USDA, if I may. Thank uh, you. Um, so uh, USDA is a critical um, ally and partner in CFIUS. And the way the, that we, given the importance around these food security issues that we've talked about, we have set up a process where USDA has full visibility into the case filings. They have visibility into the materials. They're regularly involved in our regular CFIUS meetings. And they have an opportunity to not just participate, but lead, just like a permanent member would, um, cases that present specific food security or agricultural issues. And when they do that, they are participating by and large just like a full member. So the process that we have set up ensures from my perspective that we do not leave any uh, food security or agricultural issues as it relates to national security unresolved. And so that's how we are working with them presently. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate the, the obvious secrecy um, with specific cases, but if, if the secretary and, and the department can have access in the meantime, if we could pass legislation that would codify that, I think that would probably strengthen your hand a little bit. Um, just sort of building on that, and you use the term, again, sensitive facilities, and I'm quite certain I'm not saying anything that's classified, but as, as you know, it was quite public last month when the administration or the Department of Defense added eight military bases to, to receive broader jurisdiction or provide broader jurisdiction for CFIUS, um, given the sensitivity of, of the bases. Are you, I suspect this is basically a call by the Department of Defense, but would you have suggestions on, on whether we should just more broadly uh, add all military bases um, to this jurisdiction? Because it seems to me that if we start designating certain bases as more sensitive than other bases, we might, in essence, be signaling to the enemy what, 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 where our priorities are. I mean, wouldn't it make sense to just apply that more broadly to all of our military and defense installations? Senator, thank you for that question and for your support in that expansion. That, uh, yeah, my insistence in working with the DOD, we did start the regulatory process for adding those eight bases, added 300,000 square miles of additional real estate coverage. The way that Congress set up our authorizing statute and FIRMA was mm -hmm. very intentional not to blanket the United States right. with real estate jurisdiction. And we give great deference to our partners at the Department of Defense and elsewhere to designate for us sure. what is sort of a proximity risk. But um, these are certainly important questions. They're hard questions, and I'm happy to continue working with you. On I that. might just wrap up with this question. You can either answer or not. But with, when it comes to land itself, um, whether it's agriculture or otherwise, it's not like we're going to grow more unless we're going to, you know, I don't think we're going to take over Alberta or anything. But 
it just it just seems like it's such a precious commodity that maybe we you know con should just consider more restrictions uh, more blanketed restrictions but just my thought my comment i'm not even overly committed to it it's just something to think about thank you Thanks, and thank you for your help thank